Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Father of the living water, the rock who gave us birth, our life and our salvation. Now let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin, into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil in the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace. And restore us to living in your holiness through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. And now rejoice with all of creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to fallen, casts out hate, brings peace and humbles earthly mind. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.
Spirit be with you all. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave us your Son as the body, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. We love one another. God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us use of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father was sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. But we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of their judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars, for those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have for him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Peacefully with others. 
Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Love one another. Why? Because it all comes from God. It has a source, it has a fountain of life. And to tap into that fountain of life is to enter the great mystery of what creation is all about, in that it is infused, it explodes with love. It's all about love. And he talks in a circular motion, God abides in me and in you and each other. It is this reciprocal motion that is constantly moving. It is alive, a living thing nurtured by the Holy Spirit. And to enter into that love is to enter into a world that goes beyond just what we might say is good to like each other or to love each other. It is good to get along. It is good to be peaceful. Now it comes into a higher spiritual plane that carries the soul, so to speak, to a level that it never thought rise before, and it's all because of this Jesus, crucified and resurrected, that the definitive point of what love is all about is now made known to all the humankind. And he talks more, God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God, and when that happens, God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way. It has reached its ultimate point. It can't go any further. It's bigger than you ever could have imagined. And there is no fear in love because fear comes out of the law. But now God has offered something that transcends the law, it does not destroy it, but transcends it and the invitation is come and live in this type of love. Why do we do this? Because he loved us first. He made the first move, it wasn't our move. It was this God of all creation that comes and says, in this human being, man and woman, shall I find my abode ultimately. That is where I choose to reside. And so our theology teaches us, in order to make this real in our lives, so that God is not just something dangling up in the sky that we hope is there, but now it is in flesh. It's tangible. People gather around him. They touch him. They walk behind him, they listen to the words he has to say. And he brings them a new vision of a life that transcends current secular power. That it goes beyond all that and it invites all of humanity into it. And when that happens, a new vision of what life could be. The kingdom of heaven is within you, it is here, says Jesus. And so in the gospel, Jesus writes, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. What does that mean? The vine grower, of course, is the creator. Another word for the vine grower is creator. And he sends something that is tangible to us, not something out there that we cannot touch, that we cannot see, but rather the one that breathes, one that cries, one that is in pain, one that dies, one that is taken up out of this world as proof of what ultimate love is all about. So, if this is true, if this is true, love is made complete in what it happens to you and me in our association through Jesus to God. I am the vine, you are the branches. You are called to bear fruit. Now, there is an intimacy there that cannot be denied. Whatever happens in the world is part of who we are and how we respond to it. And how we respond to it is the choice that perhaps some people want to make insofar as they want to, as the psalmist would say, put their trust in temporal rulers. But is there a source that goes beyond all of that, that transcends our way out of thinking, that somehow we can view people who are radically different from us as related, as brothers and sisters, worthy of our hope, our desire, and our our support in their life in the world. Here it comes. My Father is glorified by what you do, that you may bear much fruit and become my disciples. My Father is glorified by what? To abide in me and my words in you. Can God be glorified beyond what God already is? Or is there a sense that without this vine, this branch, 
church and these people that come and join into this will find out life that makes God complete. It's a radical idea because we've always been thought of God being complete in and of itself. But yet the text invites us to say, God has a sense of completion that he wants to improve in you. Could you be any more loved than to be asked to be part of that? When we talk about church, when we talk about our faith, throughout our lives, it modulates, it changes. But every once in a while, something hits and it hits hard. But here, in the Gospel of John, is Jesus saying, come, become one with me. Be the vine that comes from the branch, the branch that is sent by the Creator God. And now when that happens, this is what we will call the kingdom of God, whether here or hereafter. But while we're here, we do it in certain ways with certain words, and sometimes they fill with far more power than we think they do because we've heard them so many times. If the branch and the vine and the God of creation become one in this act of love, then what happens? We begin to bring up slogans. We don't realize the power they have, but we've had one here for years. It's called God's Something to think about, especially as we move out of this pandemic, as we who have survived may be asked, why? What is our purpose in surviving? And for the Christian that looks into it deeply, perhaps it is, to look at this text and say, I can't believe that not only am I forgiven, not only am I offered salvation, I am offered a share in the very acts of love that created everything me and everything out in the future. What more honor could we have been given by the God through Christ who gives his life for the salvation of everyone? Amen. Let us now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, let us pray. Aligned with the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer our steadfast love. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For 
trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. Through Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may you be blessed now and forever. Amen.